Hello all and welcome back to Dante Armas Gaming. Now today I'm going to show you how to overclock an AMD Threadripper 1900X. Um, there's not many videos out there, there's not many tutorials, not too many guides either. Um, I'm going to show you what I did to get 4.1 GHz stable on the overclock. Um, as you can hear the computer in the background has ramped up. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to profusely try and boot into this and uh, then we can have a look. Transition. So yeah, you want to boot into your bar, so I'm currently using my phone as my camera is out of action, so there's 4.1, so you can see basically all the settings that I have on, so I'm going to come out of there, and then what you want to do is you want to go down to voltage settings, as you can see my CPU vCore is at 1.4, uh, VCOS SOC 1.3, now you need that for overclocking, that does help. Your CPU VDD18, that's at 1.82. So what all of these are going to do is basically help you with your overclock and hopefully give you um, that desired performance that you wish. Uh, DRAM voltage, because I'm running DDR4, 3200 megahertz of Corsair RAM, you'll want your voltage set at what it can go to and obviously your vCore and your um, CPU core load line calibrations I'm actually going to go um, extreme um, I've already tested it on turbo and I know it works um, so yes um, obviously my fan settings as you can see there are set to full speed temperature intervals free on the CPU and across everything else and temperatures around 31 celsius which again is pretty good now I'm using arctic silver 5 um, yeah very very good um, uh, CPU thermal paste um, bars so everything is set up as you can see the same legacy only if you need it peripherals obviously I'm running off my uh, second uh, GPU there uh, both bandwidths of the GPUs are both at 16 um, so I really haven't messed too much my memory settings as you can see is at 3400 um, so We'll see how this goes. I did get an 1811 score. Um, I will validate this as well so you can see basically the um, the validation. So you want to save and exit the setup and just let the computer um, load. I will. So yeah, as you can see here, just loading up through. Um, I'll just show you the rig. Um, yes, I have got the um, radiator at the front on the side now. Having it there compared to up the top here, for instance, with a push pull configuration, um, actually lowered my temperatures by around about 7 or 8 Celsius. Um, hence, whilst I've got it over there. Um, so it's kind of in a push pull. The fans are pushing in from the front, and the fans on the uh, front of the radiator pulling it through the case um, and there you go as you can see now loaded up in so if I go to quick task manager performance as you can see down there 4.1 cores are 18, uh, 8 sorry and the processes are 16 utilization at the moment at 9% um, and this is probably going to go all peak tongue, so I'll come out of there, go into Ryzen Master. Like I said in a previous video, it will come up, it will bring up a warning saying please don't do it. And just let the temperature settle. So obviously out of the BIOS into the uh, main system, obviously it's going to be slightly higher, but obviously jumping around. 1.4 voltage. Uh, VD SOC score is on 1.1 there, around 1700 and as you can see across all cores from 8 all the way through to 1 is 4.1 so obviously closing down Ryzen Master does help or any process closing down Taskmaster, Ryzen Master, anything like that you've got open shut it down before you, you do your Cinebench scores let it settle there is my highest score so far, an 1811. Um, yes, um, you can see the cores there. 3.8 is what it registers at as a boost clock. Um, 
on the Cinebench, but it doesn't actually tell you um, what it's overclocked to. Hence, whilst I will do the CPU Z in a minute to show you the value the validation. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to let this run. As you can see, just running through all lovely 16 squares on Cinebench. Mind you, this is on extreme on the uh, V score and the CPU load line calibration, and I got a 1739 this time. So, not as great as my best score there, but still reasonable for uh, Fred Ripper. Um, obviously, you can save your scores. I'm just going to come straight out of that and load up CPU Z. So, what I'll do is I'm going to switch back to my camera um, on the computer and continue this in a few moments. Transition. So welcome back, I'm now on the webcam and the mic. So as you can see here is the uh, CPU validation. Um, this is basically once you've done your overclock you want to validate your CPU um, to get it out there, show others what you have got. Um, so in the Fred Whipper world I can't find as I said many tutorials guides um, explanations on how to do a Fred Ripper um, there's plenty out there for the 1950X but nothing for a 1900X so obviously you've seen via the BIOS what I've done you've seen this score on Cinebench of what I've done and you've seen the, the temperature um, so here is basically CPU Z validation um, as you can see benchmark we're going to go reference, we're going to go up and put in 8 cores there is my processor you can reference it against say a thread ripper so you can see the, the scores and I'm just going to go um, basically uh, is there any other 8 cores no 1600x nothing really there so just bench the CPU uh, give it a little bit of something to do um, as I said the Arctic Silver 5 thermal paste that I'm using is probably the best one um, that I've tried. I've tried Cooler Master, didn't keep it cool enough. Enemax, their, cool, uh, their CPU paste um, gave me a few Celsius higher um, than what the Arctic Silver was. And I then tried an unnamed brand which was, as you expected, not as good as those. Um, but kept it around 3940 the Enemax around 3334 and obviously the Arctic Silver around I have had it down to 27 I but averaging around 3132 so um, yeah it does it does pretty well um, there's up against the reference as you can see and if I just go and select um, and let's stress the, the CPU a little um, so yeah this is giving it a bit of load and um, just basically putting it through hell giving it its max um, whilst that is doing that I am going to go and load up Ryzen Master so you can uh, see what's going on now this will this stress test will run this CPU at full load yes I know it's because I double clicked it by accident if you ever load Obviously I'm stressing it so it's basically a hundred percent of let's take that off, there you go. So basically it was stressed the uh, the CPU to its max which wasn't allow me to um open up CPU Z. So let's just stress uh, stress test it again. Um and as you can see my temps around sixty, sixty one, um I know when you do this with Intel it goes up to about 70 um, at the moment you're seeing it at a steady 62 and like I said all 8 cores all at 4.1 with a CPU voltage of 1.4 running at 30, uh, 3400 MHz RAM um, so again the RAM sticks are 3200 MHz um, that is an overclock because all DDR4 runs at its native 2133 um, I've pushed it 200 uh, megahertz above that to 3400 um, and it seems to be doing pretty well um, so there's not much 
I would say really that you can do. Um, you may win the silicon lottery and you might be able to get a thread ripper that can go up to 4.3 um, on stock voltage. And then there's a bit of headroom there to uh, be able to overclock. But I'm going to stop that test now. As, you, as I said, validate it. Uh, just submit it. White screen. There you go. As you can see, everything up here. Don't know why that's there because I've never used it. Um, and there is my validation there, and then all the obviously all the details of what I'm running. Um, so SSDs and HDDs, I've got a one terabyte uh, Western Digital there. Uh, that's a Western Digital Blue, uh, just a one twenty gigabyte SSD for my operating system and then a 240 gigabyte SSD for one of my games I will be putting M.2 drives in here because um, this motherboard has space for free um, plus there's about 8 spaces on the back for 8 SSDs and a few hard drive bays in the, bo uh, hard drive bays in the bottom as well so plenty of storage for all your needs um, I would like to see what the Ryzen Threadripper 2 um, CPUs can do um, they are bringing out an X3 99 refresh motherboard gigabytes one looks pretty amazing let me see if I can find a photo of it um, let's go gigabyte oh, X3 99 refresh see if there's any images online and no I did think about getting this board which is the Zynara EX pretty smart so as I said there you've got one two three four five um, PCIe slots you've got your three there one two and three M.2 drive bays so I bloody can't keep coming in and out um, yeah so that looks quite nice this is the refresh board though um, as you can see four PCI slots um, two M.2 bays they do look very very nice um, like I said, if I wanted to add anything else in here, like gigabyte adapters or M M.2 drives running off, or stick, should I say, running off PCIe slot, I haven't really got enough enough space um, for everything that I want. But they do look pretty smart, um, and that's obviously the motherboard that I've got at the moment. Um, so I do want to see what those are going to bring. Am I going to change from the current Gigabyte Aurora 7 Gaming um, to one of these new refresh model boards? Probably not. Um, that's the Threadripper 2 Halo motherboard, um, which is quite nice. Obviously, all the VRMs, bigger heat sinks, so on and so forth. Um, basically, I just want to see what this motherboard can handle with a, a Threadripper 2 in it. Um, I will be hopefully getting the 32 core. Uh, 64 thread CPU uh, it's about 1300 to 1500 pounds um, but prices have not yet been um, clarified um, in regards to the calling obviously hence whilst I've got the uh, NMAX radiator, radiator sorry, at the front it's because it provides better calling than having it in the top that I had um, I am going to go a fully customised loop in here uh, to both blocks for the GPUs um, a block on the CPU obviously, two 480 rads in the front and a 420 in the top and hopefully EK can um, hook me up with uh, the parts that I need, all hardlined um, I do want to go Primo Chill, Fluid, I'm hesitant on what uh, Fluid I want to go at the moment uh, Sky Blue look, is looking pretty good, like I said this is the Arctic Storm build so blue and white um, black accents obviously because everything else is black in there um, and the fans will be RGB'd once I can um, sort out the wiring at the back but it's pointless doing that at the moment until I get everything else sorted um, so thank you once again all for watching this video please do like, subscribe and share and uh, I shall see you in the next one